Ma'am, I think you have been muted. Thank you. Sorry. Good morning, and uh, good morning to all those who've joined into the online class, as well as to those who've um, been uh, who've joined us in through the e-learning platform. We hope and pray that through these lessons, through what we're learning, through this course, um, enriches you, blesses you, uh, and most of all, brings about healing to your inner man, and uh, you get equipped to also help those outside of you. Okay, so let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for bringing each one of us here to your presence. Thank you, God, for showing us uh, who we are in you. Lord, even as we uh, study and learn and discover <clears throat> uh, a specific lesson today, of the problems uh, of our soul and what could those causes be. I pray that you will keep us open to hear from you. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will illuminate areas in our lives that need healing, that need repentance, that need renewing. Lord, we submit ourselves to you and we pray that Holy Spirit as you gently lead us through, God, that you will do your work in us. May we live lives that are abundant, as you have promised, not just physically and spiritually, but also emotionally. We look forward, Lord, to being whole and one, Lord, with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, so welcome. Uh, those of you who've joined in, I think uh, I do see a couple of new uh, students here. Uh, so welcome to those who are who've joined in for the first time. We're glad that uh, you could make it here. Uh, you know, we, we, we started um, this topic on emotional uh, wholeness, inner wholeness. And um, last week, you know, we began to look at what the soul is about, um, what comprises of the soul. We took some time to understand certain terms that is uh, usually used in scripture about, uh, you know, there's the terms like the heart or the mind or the soul. And uh, we kind of um, looked at what were some of those differences. We started um, briefly looking at what were what were some of the sicknesses of the soul, and we looked at how there are there were some problems that were related to the soul. So today, uh, for those of you who'd like to follow through um, in the textbook, I am on page seven, and we are on chapter two. We will be looking at this chapter, this class, as well as the next. Um, because, you know, there is so much of depth in it and um, so much for us to <clears throat> also learn and practically make use of, apply in our lives. So I've just divided this to, uh, over two classes so that we can take a little bit of time, maybe answer a couple of questions here, a few testimonies as we go through um, this lesson on um, the 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 causes of these these problems. So we saw the last time that a man is a tripartite being. Um, we have a body, we have a soul as well as a spirit. Our focus is more on the soul part of us as um, beings. We saw that the soul is divide uh, has the mind, the will, and the emotions. When we looked at the diagram, we did see that the soul has the conscious part of us where we hold our, uh, where we make our decisions, we have our thoughts. And there is also the other, the unconscious part of it where we hold certain beliefs, certain attitudes that really affect the way that we function. Um, some key things that we also did see was that the um, problems in the soul 
can affect the affect us in our spirits and it can affect us in our bodies so our focus generally is looked into maybe maybe our bodies and our spirits but as we saw in scripture that god would want us wants us to prosper in every area of our lives so even in the soul even in the function of our imagination of our thoughts anything that is associated with our mind is something that god wants to make whole and god wants to set right and uh, uh completely free in the way that we live our lives okay so we did look at some problems um related to the to the soul and today we are going to be looking at what causes some of these problems they they may be manifested in different um, life situations or life behaviors or emotional responses like anger or bitterness or um despair but what is it that really causes these problems and that's what we are going to spend time looking at and uh, um you know maybe for those of you who are also uh, who who've also taken christian counseling mm -hmm. some part of this lesson uh will uh, you know will we we will find how we can apply this even in in that course so do pay attention uh because this is just like i said this is i, I like i always say this is not just academic related this definitely is something that is, that we can practically learn for our own lives okay <clears throat> so looking at the first uh point uh, again uh, to reiterate i'm on page 7 of the uh, textbook and if we can if you all can turn to that we could just uh, follow along um, but there will be some additional um, diagrams notes that i've put up which i i shall display it for you make a present uh, put it up in a presentation so we have a good fair idea okay so the first cause or the first um uh issue that brings about problems of the soul and and a very important area is in the realm of our thinking or in the realm of our thoughts okay so um when we so so you you, you know we all know that we are thinking beings in any point of our day or our situations or whatever you're doing whether you are conscious or not of it you are thinking there are thousands and thousands of thoughts that run in your mind okay and if i'm right i think uh, research talks about that we we almost uh, um in in a day we have as close to 20 25000 thoughts that's running in our head so in a span of 24 hours you have so many number of thoughts that's being uh, that's running in through your head so these thoughts can be things like you know even when we're sitting in the class there is thoughts of okay how many people are there here today oh there are just few of us here or what is this person wearing or what is in that background or why is that picture there you know our minds are so filled uh, with uh, with information that we receive from the outside you remember we spoke about how the body is out of from, because of its senses it receives the information uh, into our minds or into our souls and then it begins to get processed in the uh, realm of our soul so our thoughts we think um thoughts throughout the day like whether like i said whether you're conscious of it or whether you're unconscious whether you're whether you have no clue there are thoughts that are being displayed um in your mind okay uh, i'd like to just uh, uh show this diagram to you to just help you understand i hope you can see this are you able to see the diagram no boss no no we can see you can see it now okay all right great so um so just just quickly just to give you um uh you know like a flow chart for us to understand what really happens or you know how how are uh, how do these things of our thoughts and our feelings and all come about so uh 
in every point of our lives there are you know at 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 any at any turn there are different situations that take place in us so this is a situation you know the class that we are having is a situation or let's say you're walking outside the street Uh, you observe a new shop that's a situation or you know you're going to work and you meet a new person that is a situation or maybe you're in your home you're you're making a meal and uh, let's say there are no onions or there's no tomatoes and that becomes a situation so anything that that you are faced with is an event or a situation all right and it is presented as it is a lot of things happen in and around us so there are situations that take place so we can we can talk about different kinds of situations it doesn't have to be negative or positive but there are different kinds of situations that happen now these situations has the potential to create certain thoughts in us so no matter what the situation is there is a thought that immediately gets processed okay the the situation becomes interpreted so the, something happens and the situation is interpreted in our minds so let's look at um, suppose you're you're in your kitchen and you're cooking and you don't have onions and you're interpreting that thing um maybe the thoughts okay what would the thoughts be if there are no onions in your kitchen this is just for us to interact okay these are not exam questions and answers So what would certain thoughts be if you don't have onions in your kitchen? Ma'am, I will think of of something that uh, some recipe which does not need onions so that yeah. the food can be cooked. <laughs> okay, good, good, right? So they said okay, let me figure out a recipe that that I don't need onions, okay? All right. Or uh, who else? What else would you all think? Now that's that's one kind of thought. What are the other thoughts that you would think? Come on students, this is to interact. <clears throat> buy, no from has had... buy from a nearby oh. shop okay so then i i have got to go probably buy from a nearby shop excellent okay good so these are thoughts that run in right so when there is a lack in a situation you're looking at what you can do so you interpret your situation in a way that that creates a thought now this thought has the potential to create an emotion okay so like avni said avni said okay maybe i she will try looking at a recipe which does not have onion so then there is the emotion that comes up is a sense of curiosity okay what else can you know let me look for something there is a sense of interest there is a sense of excitement that comes about okay um and now for those of us who may have the had the thoughts of you know i need to go buy and go buy some onions um you know the emotion may come up depending on what you feel about going to the shop uh, so oh, i am you know i'm lazy. I don't feel like doing it, you know. Uh, it, there's a, there's a sense of disinterest, or uh, people who like to go to a shop will say, "Okay, great, if I can also go pick up other things." And there's a sense of excitement. So, or there can be frustration, right? That oh, and now there's so much of work to do, get done, and uh, how am I how am I going to get to that shop? So, so do you see that the thought has the potential to bring about a certain emotion? and these emotions affect the way that we behave this the the feeling that occurs because of those thought makes you respond in action okay so now i've given you an extremely very very simple example but let's look at at a, a maybe more serious example that really uh, often kind of affects the way that we think about ourselves okay so let's look at a situation maybe there's a situation in which um um uh, uh um, maybe you you've been you've been you did badly Uh, at a, you know you got some test results okay suppose you're a student or or you know you've done a presentation or uh, something like that the situation comes you've got your marks okay and out of 20 you just got five marks all right so that's a situation that happens now that situation is interpreted and what could the general thoughts be that uh, come as a result of that situation could you all tell could you all you know 
I'm sure each of us have faced this situation, right? Having bad marks. So would you like to tell me what would the thought be if you found that you had failed in a specific presentation or a work related thing or an exam or what? What would your immediate thoughts be? You can put it up on the chat. The first thought would be, oh, oh my goodness, what will other people think about me now? <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. My everyone's going to think I'm stupid. Everything. Everyone's going to think that I'm dumb. Okay. Um, feelings Hello. like I'm undone. Uh, can, I uh, get sorry? It, can I get it redone? If I can I get it redone? Again. Can I get it yeah. redone? Okay. So that that's probably a thought. Um, okay. So Samuel says maybe you'll probably think of something. Oh gosh, I did really badly right now. Uh, let me figure out how I'm going to do better. Okay. That's, that's possibly a thought. There are also different kinds of thoughts. Uh, really, is this a mistake? Okay, maybe my teacher made a mistake. I think, you know, she, she's she been really nasty the way that she's given marks. Uh, Susan says, it's okay, but next time I will try. Okay, nobody has, nobody would have negative thoughts. I don't see any kind of uh, thoughts that have come that are negative. Any negative thoughts? What could possible? Yes, uh, uh, thinking that we could have done better. Sorry, come again. I didn't hear that. The teacher hates me. Maybe I'm not in good terms with the, with the teacher or the lecturer. That's why I'm getting this kind of grace. Okay, maybe the teacher doesn't like me. Okay, or there could even be thoughts like, you know, I'm stupid. I, I can't do things well. I'm incapable. I'm, uh, uh, you know, good for nothing. I never get things right. Yes, are these the thoughts that yes, also yes, probably yes, come in? Yeah. So, so uh, uh, the way that you interpret a situation is the way that thoughts begin to get displayed in your mind, and often we are not aware about the kind of interpretation or the kind of thoughts that we attach to situations. So depending on the thoughts that have come by is what your emotion will, will be. So let's take some of those examples that we said. So one person said, you know, it's okay, let me, let me try again. So the emotion there is one of maybe <clears throat> a, a sense of a go get, you know, I, I need to go get this, I need to solve this out, uh, you know, I need to get a, a little bit more um, diligent in what I do. So there is a sense of expectation that comes about. Okay, let's say, so someone said, what if the teacher doesn't like me? Maybe there's a sense of paranoia or a sense of doubt or a, a sense of criticism that, that, that maybe uh, is, it comes like an emotional response. Or someone who has thoughts of, um, let's say, negativity that, you know, I'm good for nothing. I, I'm not able to manage this. I, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, unable, I'm incapable, begins to feel a sense of frustration, begins to feel a sense of sadness, of dejection, of hopelessness, uh, a sense of low uh, self-worth. So do you see that? Depending on the way that we interpret our thoughts, the way, the kind of thoughts that we engage in, the kind of thinking that we engage in, it has a role to play in the way that we feel and later in the way that we behave. So for those, those uh, thoughts that come negative, where we, are, where we feel we are incapable or we are good for nothing, what would the behavior be? How would the behavior manifest? What, what, uh, what would happen? It's a question. What do you think could happen? Will not study at all again. OK. You may just, you may decide you don't want to continue the course. You may leave the course halfway, right? Or, um, you know, you just uh, tell yourself, no matter, even if I study, it doesn't matter. So I'm not going to study. This is how my life is going to be. I'm going to be a failure. So what's the point? Right. But let's say for, the, for those kind of thoughts that says, maybe there's, uh, there's something um, I didn't put in my effort completely. Maybe I should, uh, you know, give it another try. Will respond 
in, in, in that sense. Okay, so this is something that uh, we, we need to be aware of that a wrong thought is something that can create those emotions that actually send uh, tends to captivate our souls or it tends to put or, or bring us to a place of um, uh, emotional concerns or emotional difficulties and that in turn leads us to a wrong kind of an action so this is something what what happens over time is when we continue to think the same way we begin to believe what we think it becomes like a belief system inside of us if you remember in the last class we spoke about how you know in the soul we do also have the unconscious part of it that is our beliefs and our attitudes how does that get built how does it become our core beliefs is when we repeatedly think the same thing over and over and over and over again it becomes cemented like a belief system inside of us so like like a, an example like a thought that um let's say um you know maybe you've gone for a couple of interviews and have been rejected each time all right and that's the situation so the thought is maybe god doesn't love me he doesn't i'm not his child he doesn't care and that thought leads to a sense of feeling unwanted unaccepted unloved and it leads to a behavior of being isolated of uh, just uh, feeding into the self uh, to the poor self esteem and this continues the more that you keep thinking about this okay god does not love me he doesn't want to have good for me he he doesn't care about me it becomes like a strong mindset it becomes like a belief system within us okay uh, just want to bring before you uh, this 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 diagram also just to really help you to um, help you to understand this you know that there is a strong correlation between these three so the thoughts is what we think okay and this affects how you feel and this affects how we behave and similarly the emotions is how you feel and it affects what you think and what how you behave and your behavior is uh, is what what you do or how you act which again in turn affects your feeling and affects your thinking okay so these interact one with another um, uh, over over many many um, you know over, over situations and this is something that we've got to be to be aware of and understand that throughout our you know our wake stage we are processing thoughts and if we don't filter these thoughts um, using god's word we are bound to bring to our souls a lot of wrong ideas and beliefs and thoughts which are completely away from what god god has called us to do okay and also remember this it's just not of the it's just not uh, um, uh, something that we ourselves may be doing it's also something that satan attempts to do the the one thing that satan can do is to is to fill us is to um, um, accuse us with lies and accuse us with things that are deceptive okay and we see scripture in so many scriptures and and these scriptures are there in your um, uh, in your notes where he is called the deceiver and the father of lies revelations 12 9 says that he's called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he's after uh, uh, us to to give us a wrong picture 
about who we are in Christ. You know, that's that's his best weapon to continue to deceive you against what has been said about you in God's word. What does God's word say about you? God's word says you can do all things through Christ. God's God's word says that you are precious. God says God's word says that you are made in the image of God. God says God's word says that he has given you all wisdom. He is the treasure of wisdom and knowledge and that we have the wisdom of God. So scripture is replete with things that helps us see that we are uh, the way God sees us to be. We are who God calls us to be and not what our situation may demand of us, not what others have spoken about us, not what we say about ourselves and not at all what, what Satan throws back at us because that's his, that's his scheme. Right, just like uh, in 2 Corinthians 11 3, it says, The serpent deceived Eve by, by his craftiness, so the mind may be corrupted. So that's that's what, what he does to deceive us, so our mind becomes corrupted. And it's lies that he pours out. You know, he is a liar and the father of it. He's also called the accuser, he's called the tempter. And uh, he's waiting to see how he we can be intimidated, you know, like that roaring lion who where we can be intimidated by the the deceptions and the lies that are being thrown to, thrown to us. So that becomes the biggest weapons against uh, the believer. And how is this? I mean, he doesn't come to you in your in your ear and whisper to you and, uh, you know, say, hey, this is Satan. This is what I want to say. No, it is presented to you in the form of your thoughts, in the form of your imaginations, in the form of your understanding, in the form of your um, <clears throat> self-talk in your own mind. And that's what begins to create this place of, of wrong thoughts. OK, and what are we called to do? We are called to be able to protect our minds from this and and just understanding this really helps us to be careful about what we engage in what are the thoughts that we engage in especially when there is a situation i just want to um uh, you know, give you uh, one, just an example for us to to uh, to to understand this. So let's say, you know, two people, Mike and Tony. I hope there aren't any Mike and Tonys here. Okay, if there is, even if that's a pet name, it's not in reference to anybody here. Okay, it's just a uh, random Mike and Tony. All right. So let's say Mike and Tony are working in a uh, in an organization and they receive some feedback about the work. So it's the same situation, but we are looking at two different people and how they they respond. OK, so Mike, um, when he receives the feedback about work, the thought that comes to him is if I was smarter, this wouldn't have happened to me. All right. Now that's Mike's thought. And what what follows is an emotion of sadness, maybe negative about how he's going to perform in his future. OK, and what is his behavior? He develops a very negative opinion about himself and doesn't make those adjustments to his work because he believes he is the problem. All right. So do you see that just by the thought that uh, um, either he's engaged in himself or he's allowed the enemy to deceive him, it has come to a place of saying, you know, this is me. I'm the problem. Whereas Tony, Tony says, I must have underestimated the kind of effort this job needed. I must be more prepared. OK, so the emotion that comes is he's disappointed, but he's motivated about his future work and behavior. So uh, although he's not happy about his performance, it doesn't affect who he is because he knows that there is a plan, there is a purpose for his life. And so he makes a plan to prepare better in future. OK, so this um, uh, uh, just just to give you that example to help you see that the way that we think or the way or the kind of thoughts that we engage in really matter in the way that we create problems for our soul. All right. OK, I want to quickly stop here and uh, any any thoughts or any questions on this this part of it, because this is a very, very significant um, cause of problems that come in our souls, because we are thinking beings. We are always in the process of thinking, you know, someone just has to say something to us and we've immediately gone on on a mode of thoughts and um, interpretation. And then that becomes like a like a painful, painful thing. So a lot of emotional problems arise 
arises as a result of the interpretation of, of our situation, the way that we think it and the way that we open ourselves into the the imaginations and the deceptions of the enemy. Okay. Any thoughts, any questions here? I'll just briefly stop for a couple of minutes to hear from y'all. <clears throat> Yes, Rupa. Yes, Rupa. Uh, just wanted to share a small learning about this thought life, ma'am. Uh, I think we learn so many managements, but as a Christian, thought management is the the most important thing, I think. Because unless we understand the source of the thoughts we get, and we learn to uh, interpret and perceive the thought we are getting and uh, try to delete it or accept it at that level instead of just uh, giving our lives over to those thoughts. Many times we are captivated by the thoughts and our lives are wrecked because of those thoughts. Because I have uh, I, I already shared with you when I because I have lost my mother when I was very young. I had this insecurity, deep insecurity that something will happen to my father and he will die. That thought uh, has captivated me and I used to get hallucinations and uh, I was really in that bondage, in that fear, in that, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, it's like it's... Um, prison where I would not have come out. I was there for almost uh, 12 years in that place. I, I was praying, I was reading the Bible, but I never knew how to get out of it. And it is, was a, a tormenting, those thoughts used to torment me like anything. So in that process, when I really sought the Lord, God has uh, given me, uh, taught me so many things, how to overcome it how to understand that these thoughts are not from God. And uh, there are three sources that uh, we get. Uh, he is the counselor and he gives you thoughts which are edifying, building you up, strengthening you, encouraging you and correcting you, not condemning you. Whereas these thoughts are, um, which are really harming me, captivating me, stealing my joy, stealing my peace with God. So when I started realizing it, I started in trusting in God and praising and trusting in his word and his promises for me. Slowly, I was delivered from those fears. And I really uh, thank God for liber liberating me and uh, bringing me from that stage. From that time on, there's so many other thoughts which uh, at many times that uh, they came into my life and uh, wanted to captivate me. But because of this uh, learning process has given me the grace to identify those thoughts and uh, in due time overcome them. I just wanted to share it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, uh, and I'm sure each of us have a story like this. So I would... Um, you know, this isn't an assignment, but then for all of us who are on the call, if you can take some time, um, you know, to be able to put um, uh, this learning in practice, think of a situation that creates a thought that is negative for you and attempt to chart what happens, you know, when I have that negative thought, is this the emotion that's coming about and this is the way that I behave? You know, if you can draw that or if you can, you know, somehow be able to represent that, it will be so useful for you because the next time you engage in that, it really helps to change the course of that, okay? All right. Um, I'm, I'm just going to answer a few questions. I think uh, Anita has asked, why is it that I see more potential and negative than, than positive? Okay. So uh, I, I think it has a lot to do with the way that we um uh, you know the, the 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 primary focus in which we view life okay so 
if you you see life through the eyes of hope and the eyes of what god has for us at all times you will begin to see that your thoughts begin to change more positively but then whenever um, if if we're looking at it through the focus or the lens of of um, pessimism and you know uh, destruction and doom we tend to have more negative kind of thoughts okay and as remember satan also has a part to play in this anytime you know let's say especially maybe you've fallen into some kind of a sin right that is the thought of okay you know when you believe and you say okay the lord jesus has taken away my sin i am cleansed in jesus name uh, okay that is immediately a lie and a deception that follows that says <clears throat> you being a believer i mean you've sinned you've done this some 150 times do you think god will god will forgive you what is that those are deceptive thoughts right those are those are lies that the enemy brings so to be able to discern that that what is deception and what can come from within us because if if we have a general outlook to life that is hopeful and that is um, um, that we find in purpose we will find that our thoughts become more positive but if not it becomes a lot more negative Okay, Prabhaka, your question is, how do we undo the thoughts that have caused deep impact? It is to, one is, it is number one is to recognize it, to become aware of it. And uh, as I am speaking, I'm sure that even you are aware of the negative thoughts that you replay in your mind. And that's why I asked you, do this exercise especially that one or two thoughts that keep you captivated right put it down or write it down and <clears throat> every time you are faced with that similar thought remember it it there is a there is a um, automatic pattern that will follow that emotion and behavior it automatically follows but it takes you to be aware and takes you to take like you know it says in uh, uh, 2 corinthians 10 verse 5 I'm, I'm just going to read out that verse uh, 2 corinthians 10 verse 5 it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god so that you bring every thought into captivity in the obedience of christ so what are you doing when you recognize that there are these negative thoughts that keep that has made a serious impact on you recognize it and uh, bring it to captivity to the obedience of christ so what are you doing you're pulling it down and you're placing it there and saying you know this is not what god has said about me god has said this about me okay if i if i keep saying maybe i'm a failure i'm good for nothing god has said that i can do all things through christ who um who um uh, uh, who strengthens me or if it says or, or if it says you know the lord doesn't love me or the lord does not care about me i would in turn i would put scriptures the lord perfects everything that concerns me uh, the lord uh, the lord is my fortress he is my shield he's the one who counsels me he's the one who gives me wisdom so when you do know that there yes there could have been deep impacts that have been that have been made but like i said you know as we keep thinking the belief system becomes stronger and stronger the wall becomes stronger and stronger so the way to break it as we will be looking at in chapters later is through the word of god is to is that is your weapon to because it's living and active and it pierces through every joint and marrow so the more that you keep um, meditating on that word, the more that you speak that word, the confess that word through your mouth, you will begin to see some of those walls breaking. So even if you, if, if, if uh, that's why I said, you know, take time to, uh, to examine your thoughts and write those down, whatever have been those negative thoughts, uh, write that down and bring scripture that will dispute all of those negative thoughts that you'd bring in you'd see that as you keep doing it faithfully day in day out you know you keep doing it faith comes from hearing the word of god so as you keep saying it faith is going to build and those things are going to crumble everything that has made that deep emotional wounds will begin to heal because 
his word is like the balm. It's the balm of Gilead that will bring about a restoration and a wholeness. Okay, so um, don't don't come to a place say, okay, I've, I've, the, the the damage is all done. No, God has given you that weapon, and we are to use that weapon to to impact those thoughts that seem to have emotionally hurt us. Okay, I hope um, Prabhaka, I've been able to answer that. All right. Uh, are there any questions? I don't think so. So I think we'll 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 go forward. Okay. So the the next part of it, or or another cause uh, that we um, uh, that creates the problems in our souls is the words that we use. Okay, the way that we speak. So one is the way that we think. The next is the way that we speak, and um, uh, our words can you know has so much of power in it our words uh, has um, uh, has a lot of uh, strength either to bless or either to curse now this is not just for for uh, our, for anything outside of us but it also is is to us you know proverbs 18 21 i think it's a verse that we we really we, we keep speaking over and over again it says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit so what whatever comes out from your lips okay is what is the fruit that it will bear so you have the um the power to say things that either bring death or either bring life and the words that we speak can definitely affect the way that uh, affect our souls so I, I think some examples that we, you know, that, that I want to bring up is uh, uh, the way that we say things to ourselves, you know, um, and many of this be becomes uh, like those unconscious patterns that we don't even realize that we have been there. Like, um, you know, someone, maybe when you're looking into the mirror for those who may be feeling um, dissatisfied with the way that they physically appear, right? You look into the mirror and say, oh, I hate this hair, or I hate this, or, you know, I wish I was taller, or I wish I was fairer. Um, see, these are these are words that you profess uh, on, your, on yourself, or... Maybe you're looking at uh, yourself and your abilities and, and maybe saying things like, you know, I amount to nothing. I don't think I will crack this uh, uh, job or I don't think I will be able to do a good job of this. So the words that we speak to ourselves, the words that we, we generate from our mouths, things that we have spoken to ourselves and even things that others have spoken over us over time we begin to believe it we be it becomes a part of us it becomes a part of our thinking and it becomes part of our emotional problems okay so if you look at scripture there are a couple of verses that are there where it talks about in um uh, Psalm 64 verse 3, it says, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words. Okay, so bitterness in the way that uh, bitterness, resentment, sadness, um, doom, uh, all of that when we speak has a way to, to cause destruction. Okay, um, again, Proverbs 12, it says, there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. So what we speak in wisdom is something that will promote health. Again, Proverbs 16, 24 says, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. So the more that we speak of, um, of God's word to us, you will find that the soul there is healing in the soul and there is healing in the bones all right so what we speak over ourselves or what we have heard others speak about is is something that creates problems to our soul so one of the things is um and and <clears throat> some of this um, and I'm sure a lot of us relate to this, you know, what people have spoken over us while we were children, while we were young, all right, becomes like a pattern in our lives, 
So uh, as you recollect, maybe significant people in your life, out of the uh, ignorance of their hearts, could have said something to you, you know, making comments about your physical appearance, making comments about your abilities, making comments about the kind of person you are. That hits into the soul, you know, and brings like a wrong thinking pattern. So what are we called to do in times like this is to have the wisdom to reject and reject what is not um, in obedience to what God's word says and to receive what is what the word of God says. So all the promises of God's word apply to you and me. Okay. So our, what we are doing is to either rejecting that which is not in line or in alignment with God's word or receiving what God's word says. So you need, we, we should be conscious and determined to counteract this impact of these negative words. You know, it's one thing to dwell. You know what the word dwell means? To dwell means to stay. So when someone says something to you, you have two choices. One is to dwell, that is, you know, stay in there. You make it your home, you make it your house. Stay in there, enjoy the negativity, feel sad about it, have a pity party on it. That is dwelling. Or you counteract it. That is, you are there to fight. You are being in the offensive and you are actually fighting what has come to you. So we need to have that ability to counteract those negative words that either we are saying to ourselves or what people speak and say what God has said. And what does God say? say? That, that God gives, has given us an identity in him. That we are only what he says he is, uh, we are. We will only be what he has called us to be. We will accomplish only that which he has called us to accomplish. So we are his, right? And to be able to counteract that, to counter it whenever we recognize that we are tending to use those words within ourselves or when others have, um, have also... Um, Apologies, but when others also have uh, continued to do that to us. Okay, so two we, we've looked at two areas is one is the wrong thoughts and secondly is our wrong words. Okay, uh, any questions up here? We have around two minutes and I think we can uh, just take any questions we have before we move in to the next point in our next class. Any questions? I hope this is clear because this is this is vital for our understanding of our emotional wholeness, what we think and what we say. How long does it take to change your mindset? Um, I wish we could give it a time frame, but uh, we are to keep renewing our minds. We are called to renew our minds. So it is, I would say it is a lifelong exercise that we continue to renew our minds. You know, it's like this. When, um, let's, take a, let's take a very common example. You know, when a burglar tries to um, um, make its way into a house, what does the burglar do? the burglar begins to look at how many of the sentries or the guards are around, all right? So he will, uh, he will observe for a few days to see how many people are standing in guard. When he sees it for a couple of days, he says, okay, uh, you know, I won't loot this house, I'll go loot some other. But there is a time that he's going to come back to see if the watchman is in place or not. If the watchman is in place, you know, he will scoot. But if it isn't, that's when he will attack. And I think renewing and changing that is very similar. 
that we've got to continue, continue in the word of God, continue to build ourselves in the word of God, because any time we could, uh, you know, put our guards down is when the enemy form tries to find, uh, a, a, you know, a little place for, for to, to throw in those deceptions. So it's an exercise, I believe, is something that we need to continue keep doing. And it is, and as we do it, we may itself not know the transformation that we experience uh, within, within ourselves. But then as you faithfully keep doing it, that's something that... Um, you know that you will see the fruit too and uh, maybe i'll just give you an example so uh, so some things that i i did initially struggle with you know as a young um, uh, young as a youth i struggled with with a specific thought in my mind about who i was up until the time the scripture made new meaning to me i had read the scripture over and over and over again but it made new meaning to me uh, one fine day when I was just reading scripture, and it is Romans 8 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I began to say, I said, Why would I condemn myself when this is what scripture says that I that there isn't a condemnation for me when I'm in Christ Jesus? God doesn't condemn me. I don't care whoever condemns me. There isn't anyone, uh, there isn't God who condemns me. So why should I do it on my own? And every time you know there were those condemning, self-loathing thoughts that came in, I would repeat the scripture. I would just repeat it because I kept it written, uh, you know, in a very key place in my room, and I kept looking at it over and over and over again. So any time now, if you wake me up from my sleep and you know there is a self-loathing thought, that's the first thing that will come up because I kept, I kept, I. I, I began to understand that without the word of God, that kind of a mindset cannot be changed. That kind of a deep emotional struggle or a view of myself wouldn't change unless and until I spoke the word of God over and over again. So keep doing it. And I think the more that you do it, the more stronger you become in your inner man. All right. Okay, good. We'll we'll stop for a break. I it's ten fifty two on my clock. We will return at eleven two. So grab a cup of coffee and come back. <laughs> <laughs> 